Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Thursday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodele Uzubakum. Today on the program, President Buhari says Nigeria is looking forward to working with Biden to tackle terrorism and poverty as other world leaders look forward to greater relations with the United States. Federal government approves the new retirement age of 65 for teachers and later on the show, controversy over NCWS award to Governor Yaya Bilu of Kogi State. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Olabisi Deji Folutile. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. All right, we begin today's program by felicitating with High Chief Kola De Otitoju, who clocks 84 years today. That's Chief Otitoju, who's the father of Babajide Kola De Otitoju and an ardent fan of journalist Hangout. We want to join uh, numerous family members, friends, colleagues, and well wishes to wish Baba a happy birthday. Gentlemen, <laughs> it's a happy birthday to Baba. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy birthday to my long term English teacher. Your long term English teacher? And, um, <laughs> and moralist by excellence. Mm. Uh, I picked up so many valuable lessons from him. Yeah. Uh, and my dad read all the titles from Shakespeare, and he still has all of those books till today. Uh, we, we valued reading so much, and he valued knowledge. So I'm grateful for the upbringing. I'm grateful for his love for journalists and girls, because every day he will call me, how, how is Citizen Jones doing? How is how you're doing? He knows all of the OAPs hmm. at TVC. And he, he has had to speak with some of them on some occasions mm, to say, mm. look, I like the work you are doing. He was with us in the studio two years ago. Yes. When he was 82. Yes. Uh, that's the picture. That's, that's the picture. The day. When he uh, celebrated his 82nd birthday. And he must be a proud father today. Yeah, I'm, 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 you say? Honestly, I can't. <laughs> he must be very proud of his son. And I think that is the joy of every parent you know, to see your child succeeding and also uh, showing forth the kind of morals and values that you put into them. Particularly on Sunday, you know, when uh, Baba Jude was saying that I am, my name is Otitoju, you cannot expect me to now come on air and start come, lying. Come and, and, start lying. and uh, you know, I'm sure you must be very proud of him, mm -hmm. you know, hearing such things. So we wish Baba a very happy birthday long life and plenty prosperity. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. thank you. <laughs> on the behalf of the production staff of Journalist Tangles, from the producer to the backroom staff, everybody, we wish um, Baba Chief, and that's um, I Chief Koladi Otitoju, happy birthday. Thank you. Moving on now. It's a new dawn in the world's most powerful country, the United States of America and deluge of goodwill from many global leaders are pouring in for the new president, Joe Biden. While congratulating Biden and Kamala Harris, Nigeria's president, Muhammad Buhari, says he's looking forward to working together with them to tackle terrorism, climate change, poverty, and improvement of economic ties. Julie, yesterday when we were having journalists hang out, that was about the same time that um, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden were sworn as the 56th president of the United States of, uh, for, uh, of the United 46, sorry, of the United States of America, and we saw what led to the the election before the keenly contested November election, yes. and we saw how it all turned out. And ultimately, at a point in time, the democracy of America was tested, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we saw democracy <laughs> prevailed. Yes, at the end of the day. Yes, um, is is a good day in America, or it was a good day yesterday. Mm. Mm. Um, the world expected America to show leadership when it comes to democracy, and even military might. And 
yesterday provided an opportunity for America to show leadership once again. It was a very colorful ceremony, and I was quite impressed um, with the way everything went. And uh, yesterday, the leader of South Korea said something. He said, mm. America is back. Mm. You know, mm. that should tell you how everyone feels about a Biden presidency. Um, the world is tired of the um, antics of Trump. A lot of the American allies were very edgy about um, the attitude of uh, Donald Trump. They, and they couldn't they, speak out. They, they, they just <laughs> look at even <laughs> the Mexican <laughs> leader. They had to wait until <laughs> all the legal battles were concluded. <laughs> you know? So uh, they, they believe that uh, Joe Biden will represent a positive change. And uh, they're already thinking of working uh, tremendously with America. You can see our president said we will need help. We would like to collaborate in the area of uh, tackling terrorism and the rest. And I believe that's one area where the Americans uh, can really be of help because America remains the number one military nation in the world. Mm -hmm. the, 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 in terms, when you look at even the Air Force, the strength of the American Air Force, no country comes close at all in terms of the. the uh, fighting platforms at their disposal and the capacity of those platforms. No country. No country comes close. If you see the ratings by um, all of the, um, uh, the agencies that track the military might of countries, you see that America stands high up there in terms of its air force and even um, its army too is also so respected because of the kind of weapons at their disposal i've seen in war situations american weapons tested against russian weapons i've seen a saudi a saudi pilot drop down two fighter jets made by russia just one pilot confronted two aircraft and he, he, he downed the two of them during the Iraqi war. Mm -hmm. And we've seen situations in which the top US main battle tank, the M1A1 Abrams, now modified and up upgraded to M1A2 Abrams. Mm -hmm. Take a hit from the Russia T-92 tank and it didn't have any impact on it. Whereas, if the Abrams had taken a, I mean, a shot at the Russian um, uh, tank, um, the, the, I mean, the main battle tank, mm -hmm. you know, the um, outcome is very predictable. So this is the thing. You can imagine if we had, if we had T-72 Russian tanks just before Gulag Jonathan left office, and it helped us, to take back all of those local governments that Boko Haram was controlling in, in uh, Bono State, in Adamawa State, in Yobe State. Seven local governments in Adamawa State were reclaimed before the election in 2015. Two local governments in Yobe were reclaimed before the election in 2015. And no less than 17 of them in, in uh, Bono State reclaimed, down largely to the efforts and the, the weapons at the disposal of our troops. So if America will assist us, yes, the Tucano uh, bombers, uh, fighter bombers will soon come. But we need a lot more from them. And Those they have the capacity. To the help war, fight terrorism. Look, I've said it before that if you have the American ground attack helicopter, the Apache, you can stay in Lagos and engage an enemy in Ibadan. Because mm -hmm. the, it has a range of not less than 130 kilometers. That's one that Nibado. That way, that way you, you save the lives of your troops because they don't have to go so close to the combat zone before achieving their aims. An Apache helicopter. Yes, and that's why countries, even uh, uh, India, that is one of the top 10, that has one of the top 10 militaries in the world, 
are using the Apache helicopter today. They waited for five years for the U.S. to deliver Apache helicopters to them. This city the inauguration yesterday. Something funny came to my mind. After the whole thing, I was telling a friend that, look, brisk ceremony, devoid of formalities, devoid of we want to recognize our former president, we want to recognize this person, you know, the time we spend on protocols and everything, mm. when you see the arrangement of the program, mm. and you begin to look at, look, these guys are so organized, and within an, well, how many minutes, the, the inauguration, <laughs> they had it over with. Uh, actually, uh, the inauguration used to be full of ceremonies. I think uh, the COVID-19 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. also uh, played a part in that uh, short ceremony. But having said that, if you look at the American uh, society, you know that uh, this is a society where they put their leaders to, the, you know, they ensure that their leaders are up and doing. Even before Joe Biden took office yesterday, he had been talk, he had been prepared for the job. He had his cabinet was, ready. Yes, he had it, everything, his you know. His cabinet was ready. So it's not, it's, it, they know that they, they are not operating in a society that had is, his where first you can. Uh, virtual meeting with his cabinet yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> he signed, I mean, today he has already signed about 17 executive orders. So, you know, they know that they are not operating in a society where you can afford to use about six months, eight months, or eight months to, to screen your minister, to, screen to get your, your name, minister, the names of to your minister get ready yourself ready organized. Do that. Oh, they wow. do. Wow. He knows that he cannot afford to do that. So you can see the beauty of a society that their leaders understand the problems on ground. Look at it today. He has already reversed many things that his predecessor did. The immigration because laws. The immigration laws. And because those are the promises he made. And he had to make sure that these promises are fulfilled. He, he, I mean, it's just the beauty of everything. I, it's quite interesting. And uh, do you want to look at the speech? Yeah. You know, the way he spoke, mm. everything he said. How do you feel? You want to feel like, oh, how I wish I'm an American. That you is could the hardly truth. even believe that the American president, uh, that they use teleprompters. It, but the way they, the so delivery of the speech it was so, so smooth. smooth. Yes. It was very smooth. Yeah. You know, it looks so <laughs> natural. And, and he has energy for his speech. And he has energy and for his speech. Yes. At 78, the mm. oldest president in America so far. Mm. Look at the way he's been carrying that himself. That's a problem. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, they, he had one here, he had mm. another one here, and there's another yes. one right and in front of, <laughs> of him. How, how do you now, how do you look at this kind of thing? You just, because he has to really show that he's... He's up for it. He's mm. up for it. Okay, mm. when Barack Hussein Obama, when he was 10 years, this man entered the U.S. Congress in 1972, <laughs> and... Obama made sure, nominated him years later to be his vice president, and Obama ensured this victory for this man. Yes, a very worked, good relationship with him, for it. Obama and uh, Joe Biden. Yes, um, you remember Obama gave him the highest honor in their country, and mm. uh, he was so moved it was, that it he burst into tears. tears. Yeah, yes. And um, they had a fantastic working relationship, mm. um, and both families, uh, uh, Dr. Biden and uh, 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 Michelle Obama, ah, they're also very close, woman. you know, so they, yeah. they had a very good uh, working relationship as uh, president and vice president, and he did his best to ensure the emergence of uh, his deputy. And of course, other people too worked so hard, especially those people in Georgia. Because mm. they badly wanted to take control of the Senate, mm. and some people worked hard to ensure that those two seats mm. from Georgia made the difference. Yes, uh, were won by the Democratic Party. So, and, and I'm that was happy. a slight difference. Yes, I'm happy that the people that uh, Biden is also grateful mm. because he's even calling black families at random. Mm. Look at the mm. Nigerian mm. family. Yes, yes. I wanted yeah. to say my producer is just telling me mm. now that even the way Nigerians jubilated. 
on this inauguration. Mm, they the way, see this as their they, own know, They even went to out and so Ashwaib and co. But mm -hmm. when you see it, you discover that because of that immigration law mm. that is going to benefit them, a lot of Nigerians yes. in America and Nigeria, they are very, very happy. Yes. And the three appointments Joe Biden has made so far, you can see uh, uh, you can, Nigerians. From Nigeria. Mm -hmm. from Nigeria. Including someone from my state. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, Ashwaib is ready. He's going to kill her now. This is, uh, as you can see, this is Biden Harris for our inauguration. Get your see the mother on the glass bowl. Ah, you put it on. I can't watch that in the elevator. I want to tell you, let me. Anybody go back down, sir? Yes. On the kidney. On the kidney, though. Ah, what is this? What is this? See you guys. Trust that you are guys from the southwest. <laughs> they must have fair, they must that have. Typical Ankara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see that. The, the, yeah, the, always the, in the uh, Owambe mood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when I was going through the breakdown of the, of the one of the executive orders today, I just discovered mm -hmm. that, yes, those opportunities that uh, Mr. Trump actually locked ag against Nigerians, mm -hmm. a lot of them that they're going to be reversed yeah. in due course with this um, executive order, and especially the Muslims too, mm -hmm. and some other affected um, countries. Mm -hmm. Mm. So they are going to see some major reversals. <laughs> That's ahead. why the, the Mexican leader is happy because he has already stopped the construction, the construction of the wall. Of the wall. <laughs> they stopped the, the president. <laughs> really? President Biden has stopped the construction <laughs> of the wall because during his campaign in 2016, Trump described the Mexican migrants as rapists. And, and drug addicts. They are everywhere. Yes. So they, they are, are rapists and drugs. They are taking over everything. They ensured that he lost um, us, this state where uh, Bob McCain came from. So okay, McCain, okay. Um, very close to the, the Pennsylvania border. No. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm sure I will remember later. And yeah. that was Fox News called that state so early for for uh, oh, um, Biden, Biden. Mm. and some Republican hardliners turned against Fox. Mm. But it was, uh, it was a, a, a good call because in the end, they, they won that state. Because many people from New York were migrating into the state. Mm. So the demographics changed. It mm. had been a Republican state for many years. Mm. That's a McCain state. Uh, Senator McCain said, you know, and Trump used to abuse McCain. So the people uh, <laughs> said, okay, we are going to back our person. Mm. We are going to honor him in debt by voting against you. And he lost, uh, um, he, lost he lost, the state. Mm. You are trying so, to remember. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to. <laughs> and, when you, and when you look at the transition, yes, it wasn't the smoothest transition we've seen so far. A lot of uh, Nigerians, a lot of us were looking at, will Trump leave the White House come January 20th? The way Trump was going about and um, he exhausted all the options, legal options, before he resorted to the extra <laughs> legal ones. <laughs> now, the, when the, this thing sat down, when the, what do they call them? The... Um, Electoral College, college when yeah. they sat down, I think the 6th of December, a lot of people felt that they weren't going to ratify the results and waited till the Congress to sat, you know, 6th of um, January. And Donald Trump actually went round most of the courts and I think it was in the Supreme Court three times. And at the end of the day, it still said it was Joe Biden. And when you want to look at the system, the alacrity in which those cases was dispensed on. The election yeah. was November, yeah. and the swearing is January. January. Actually, what uh, we could see from the American example, even though a lot of okay. people Arizona. think... Arizona. Arizona, okay. Arizona. Even though a lot of people think uh, America has uh, fallen backward, it has uh, the, you know, having of democracy with Trump and all of that. But from what we saw, we could see that America has proven to the world that it's actually the bastion of democracy. Mm. It has shown us that the institutions are working. Mm. It strong. has also shown us that this is a country where the rule of law is followed to the end. Mm. It has also shown us that there is no individual 
no right. matter who you are, that can be stronger than the states. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, the states. Mm -hmm. and all of these things are the things that make the American Look at what situation. Is happening in Uganda. Yeah. And compared to what we what have, we have then, mm -hmm. that is what makes America America, and that mm -hmm. is what we continue to make it America. You know, interestingly, I wasn't afraid. I knew Donald Trump was going to leave. Because I knew that America is, the, the, the institutions have grown so, mm. Mm. you know, over the years that yeah. there is not possible for an individual. And look at the way the cases were quickly dispensed, dispensed of. of. Yeah, you is. know, they, gave, they also gave Donald Trump the opportunity to exhaust the all, all the avenues. All the avenues. Mm -hmm. When he said he wanted a recount, they did recount. If it's yes. not because of the um, attack of the Capitol Hill, they were really going to have a serious debate during the Congress mm -hmm. debates because some, mm -hmm. like ten senators, Republican senators, they've they were coming with their petition to actually yes. challenge the results. The result it was that revolt that actually that, affected. Uh, well, the, <laughs> the, the, the point is that it, uh, I, you know the other time I said it's not easy to be a loser. You Bad get the point. Mm. If, uh, he made a lot of enemies from one made, leader. Uh, and yes, <laughs> <because> <laughs> Let's just show you <laughs> some clip. <laughs> Hands with Trump. If you listen to shake hands with Trump. Really? Yeah. Mm. Wow. And look at the look way at Trump the way is looking, looking at, at you. <laughs> How can you do me like this? Wow. President Donald oh. Trump was left hanging by the Polish First Lady on camera and in front of thousands of people. Ah! <laughs> that was uh, a ultimate humiliation. I, I don't know. Trump is such a contemporary character. <laughs> he's never ready, he's never afraid to take on anybody. No, but the thing is, uh, this, you can say, is walking away because the humiliation was uh, tremendous. The American leaders have been trained to be the first to stretch the hand. Hmm. Always. President Donald watch Trump them. was the left American hanging president by the Polish first lady on camera reached out and in with front his of hand thousands before of you. people. So in this case, he reached out early, but the woman snubbed. Uh, snubbed, snubbed, snubbed him, you know? That's the wife of the Polish leader. I went to one. He just walked away. This is his wife. He just walked away. And he was saying something, you know? <laughs> so what kind of... <laughs> you know, who is this motherfucker? <laughs> so, so, for President a lot of Donald those Trump leaders... Was left uh, hanging by the Polish Trump, first lady on... Trump uh, was difficult for them to, to no. live with. Now, talking in terms of what President Muhammad Buhari said, mm. the, the assistant to fight terrorism, yes. how do we get military equipment? What can change? Because the, the prospect was looking very bright to Trump. Mm. In the short stay of Donald Trump, to be fair to him, he didn't come to Nigeria, mm. but the two times or three times that he met President Buhari, he promised, them he, he promised to work with us, and yes. we've, we've seen some kind of um, signs that he was going to actually set aside the so-called lay law, so he and it aside. He set it's, aside it's, the lay law, yes. and they started doing business with us. Yes. But it's so unfortunate that he couldn't do a second time in office. Yes, because the, uh, the very soon now, in a matter of a couple of months, Nigerians will start seeing the Tucano uh, fighter bombers. If not for the uh, corona that set everyone back, coronavirus, by now, the first set will have been delivered because our uh, pilots and airmen have already been sent there. They've, the under, training. they've undergone training. Mm. So it's uh, an irreversible uh, agreement. Step. Yes. Mm. Now, the press, well, this is one of the reasons some of us supported him when he said uh, that, look, I'm going to help you to defeat terror because he made up his mind that he was going to crush ISIS, and he did his best. With the support for the Iraqi uh, troops, they were able to send America provided troops, put troops on ground, not less than 300 of them, providing training, providing strategy, and they kicked ISIS out of Iraq. He also ensured that um, the leader of ISIS, Baghdadi, was, was killed, along with a member of his family in Syria. So he achieved his aim. He didn't start any war, but wherever he suspected that there were people who did not want uh, peace, he would go and take them out. So he is already, this is a hit by the US uh, M1A1 Abram hmm. on a truck. Precision guarded. Just one shot. 
Hmm. That truck is finished. One shot from the armor tank, the, the, that truck is gone. And the range... Is it from the armor tank at the, uh, behind? From the, it's on this side. It's okay, on the okay. left. It's on the left. They fired at it. Fired at the... Wow. At the truck. Demolished it at all. It's gone. It's gone. Wow. So we, they have game-changing equipment that if they will sub, uh, supply us, honestly, we will really enjoy uh, uh, taking Boko Haram out. But unfortunately... For us, during the Obama years, yes, they refused. Obama to work was with just us. a person that said was to just be a black, uh, uh, but, but he refused he never to support. Really cooperated with us in terms of. They you know, cited the Leahy law. They cited the Leahy law. law, but immediately Trump won. We, Trump got uh, senators, Republican senators, to set aside the Leahy law. Yes, they yeah. work with others, mm. and and even McCain, this uh, the late uh, McCain, yes, yes, yes. led the the uh, what was it called? Um, lobby mm. in favor of Nigeria, and they were able to set aside the Leahy law, mm. and uh, and then agree that okay we could buy the Tucano uh, fighter bomber because that was the choice. I asked the chief of army uh, air staff. I said, why didn't you ask for F 16s F fifteen, uh, F fourteen Tomcat and the rest? He said, no, that we look for a fighter bomber that is very suited for our own environment. And I can understand it because with the Tufkano fighter bomber, you can even land on a hard surface. And it can do some things that the F-16 cannot do, like also serving as a reconnaissance uh, uh, aircraft, you know. And it can last in, in the air for so long. That means you can have hours of bombings. Hmm. So these are the things. I know still have uh, best bets. Yes, they've used it in Afghanistan, used even the Mali, they've used it and it was very successful in those Mali, places. Yeah. Yes, you know. This is the, the thing, it's a good thing that at least he did that for us. And for that, some of us remain grateful so to him. That from the big, he, he was one of the first leaders to invite our president for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Mm -hmm. Although we started hearing later that he said that uh, the president was lifeless, but none of us heard him say it. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons some Nigerians hated him, but you didn't hear him say it. Mm, no, no, nobody had, uh, what we heard him saying was, I'm going to support you to defeat terror. And he lived out to Joe Biden, has, uh, Joe Biden has shown, you know, that he's going to be um, um, a black friendly uh, president. Mm, yeah, the, what he has done so far. And um, the Nigerians he has even nominated into his cabinet and all the strength, you see that, look, Uma, you have it very good. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, Nigerians have a lot to benefit from this administration. But also, too, we need to also up our game diplomatically. Mm. For instance, um, talking about uh, fight, um, that, uh, talking generally about uh, security, poverty, the speech of our president, you know, I think is a bit uh, bogus. I think we should, going forward, the president and our foreign team should actually identify our areas of need and, uh, you know, present these specific needs mm -hmm. so that uh, we can get going right from the start, not just uh, talking bogusly. You know, okay. because we need to actually determine the areas where we want our people to benefit. And it's a good thing. For instance, I, I, I saw the video of Biden talking to that, America, uh, to that Nigerian immigrant family to the point of eating them to, to the White House. The White House. Mm. And uh, from what he has done so far, from the, uh, from the appointments, from the executive orders that affect us as a nation, we can see that it's actually going to be an ally and that we have a lot let's, let's hope so. mm. to benefit mm. if we use the opportunity very well. I like the way you said that, let's <laughs> hope so. Because politically, it's their interest that concerns their interest is. that is. We were yes. hoping Obama will come yeah, to Nigeria in eight exactly. years. He never came to Nigeria. But, he went to Ghana. <laughs> but what I'm also saying is that we also need to define our own interest mm. early in, in, okay. into this administration. All right. We'll take this breather. When we come back, we'll discuss more. 
is still your favorite program, Journalist Tangas. We'll be right back after this time. Stay with us. It's your multi-award winning program reaching you from the television station of the year, Journalist Hangouts. Now, the reward for teachers may no longer be in heaven, but here on earth, the Federal Executive Council, FEC, has approved increase in the retirement age of teachers in Nigeria from 60 to 65, or 40 years in service as against 35. Briefing journalists in, on the development in Abuja, the Minister of Education, Adamo Adamo, said the bill, known as Harmonized Retirement Age for Teachers in Nigeria, Bill 2020, will be sent to the National Assembly for legal backing. Babajide, this is a kind of good news and a kind of relief for teachers. Yes, and not just the um, adjustments made to the years, uh, the years of service, but the fact that uh, some welfare packages as well. I remember my dad being posted to rural areas to teach. Um, it's not what many people um, want to be involved in. But now the government is proposing a kind of incentive for for teachers who are posted to rural areas that will encourage them uh, to, to work in those rural areas. So I think that um, it's, a good, uh, it's a good move. And for so long, teachers have been badly treated in our country. I, I just like the fact that the federal government is providing leadership at this time uh, for the states. I pray that the bill says true. I hope that it says true. And um, I hope that states will domesticate uh, some of the decisions that the government intends to take with this bill, including uh, uh, the rural posting um, allowances and a special package for teachers posted to rural, rural areas. The wages of teachers remains very low in our country. You, yet we need to encourage people to take to teaching. Not Honestly, if people, teachers. if many people have the opportunity, they will not want to be uh, teachers. But it was not like that before. When we were growing up, teachers were much more respected than even bankers and other people. But the reverse is the case. Mm. The reverse is the case now. Teachers can hardly send their own children to good schools because they don't earn good wages. And uh, for your university lecturers, you can see some of them taking up up to three different jobs lecturing jobs up and down mm. in different schools just to make just to, just to make ends meet yes. yes you know so i think that this is a good uh, decision but we must also invest in training of those teachers it's not enough to provide uh, uh, good salaries and all that they have to be well exposed to latest trends in um, in um, teaching they have to Sent, sent on courses so that they can give the best to, to their pupils, to their students. Because the quality of instruction is what will take us there. Many countries of the world um, have made education priority. I remember, I think, the leader of Australia who was asked to name uh, his three priorities and he said education, education, education. Because education will lead to um, an upsurge even in researches. Once it is the quality of education is good, we'll be able to come up with um, all kinds of inventions and all that. And Nigeria has to be on that part, but we, the quality of instruction has to improve. Hmm. This is a good development. And um, a lot of people will say for a long time, these people, the teachers have been neglected. 
of federal government to increase the service year and, of course, the retirement age and the package? It's just one of those things. Let's put it that way. You see, uh, like Babaji Day said, teaching is not an attractive uh, profession in Nigeria now. Now, if you look at people that are teaching, m most, many of them are just there because they don't have a choice. Mm. Let's hope that this will, you know, stimulate interest in teaching. But beyond this, I think we should look at the kind of people that are now, that we employ as teachers. Because, you know, government policy is one thing. The quality of people that we employ is another thing. There is no point keeping somebody that is not a good hand in the system for 65 years. <laughs> because we have also had cases of teach, you know, teachers that mm. are tested and assessed and they are failed. They even failed the subjects they are supposed to be teaching mm -hmm. their so students. They, 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 said, the they said the same and yeah, they and they, they, uh, Yes, and they still failed. So we need to strike... So there's no point keeping a, that kind of person yes, for 70 years. Yes, we need to strike years. a balance <laughs> between who we are keeping now and so that we don't just look at it that this is a blanket uh, extension of uh, years of service that you now that will now make us keep incapable hands in the system for longer than necessary, and that is why uh, training and retraining is very important. And the way we also recruit into the system, because we have also seen situations where, in some parts of the country, especially, where you know a local government uh, chairman could just issue a letter to a school head mm. asking them to employ some people as teachers, people that don't even know anything. Exactly as you know, and you know that foundation is very important. Yes. Look at Finland, for instance. Teachers, they get the, they, they are the highest paid yes. in Finland. Mm. Mm. And Finland education, you cannot compare it with any in the world. They are the best. Do you get it? So, which means that when you invest in teachers, you are likely to get better output. So, it's a good thing, it's a good development, but we need to also look at things holistically so that we can maximize the benefits. You know, we've seen some states that they've come up with state-of-the-art equipment for schools, yeah. modern schools, um, big edifice and everything, mm. but we still don't look at the manpower the teachers are manning those schools. If you go to, during the time of um, Minister Mechi in River State, mm. the modern schools he was bu building, mm. during the time of Ashwa Jubala Tinobu, the mm. mega secondary schools they were building, and if you go to Oshun too, Arigbo Ishola built a lot of the schools, but some of these governments, they didn't pay attention to those people driving the students. Yes, you know, I was in Bono State recently, and I I did a two-part documentary on education in the states. I looked at their schools. They have the best schools in Nigeria, the best. In spite of their the challenge. Secondary and primary schools in the country by a long shot. They have the best. You can you see some buildings, some secondary school buildings in Bono State, you think it's a university senate building. Hmm. They are that beautiful with hmm. air conditioners, with uh, these the um, mist, mist fans and all that, that ensure that the, the building is cool all the time, you know? And even the instructional equipment, some of them are what, what class standard, you know? The, the former governor, uh, KS, already started that uh, move, and the current governor has taken it to another level. So, it's a good thing they have those fantastic schools. But I ask the question, where are you going to get the right teachers for these schools? It's not enough to just put Understood. beautiful schools all over the place, you know? And they said, yes, we are training. I mean, we are conducting tests. And the suburb man admitted for tests conducted for school principals. 
a lot of them failed. Mm -hmm. So the advice that one can give people like Zulum and the rest of them is, look, wherever you can find the best teachers, whether they are from the east or from the south, mm. you need to encourage them to come and work in your state so that they can help you produce the best. Because those schools deserve the best of students. Students who have access to the best quality of instruction. That's the only way that you can maximize those beautiful Honestly. edifices and all that. Then even we have wardrobes. You, have, you need to see some of those schools. You won't believe it. Because mm -hmm. university doesn't even have uh, buildings that fine. So, but quality of instruction, they are still way behind. But I want to believe that someone like Governor Zulum, who himself is an academic, knows that no matter how plentiful the, the school buildings that he comes up with, if he does not find the right teachers to teach them, to teach the students, then the investment has literally become a waste. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the other thing is, what are we teaching people? We need to even look at the curriculum, uh, the school curriculum in its yeah, entirety. Yeah. We need to teach people what will be beneficial, give them knowledge that will be beneficial, yes, honestly, to them ultimately. What we have in our theoretical framework now. <laughs> there are course many courses lines. that are oh, meaningless, <laughs> that universities in our country oh, are, you know, so, so this is the thing. I just hope that um, uh, things will get better as a child of teachers. Mm. Both my mother was a literature teacher, my dad English teacher. I'm happy that, at least in their time, teachers are beginning to get the attention that they deserve, and I hope that it goes on. Once Buhari leaves office, these are the kind of legacies That's for which he will be remembered. Mm. All right. Finally, on the show, there's still much ado about the award bestowed on Governor of Kogi State, Yabilu, by the National Council of Women's Societies, NCWS, last weekend. While the group said the award as the most generous, sensitive governor, gender sensitive governor in Nigeria, is in recognition of his efforts to put women in sensitive and strategic positions in his government. Others think it is undeserving. Let's hear from NCWS and their organizers of the award. worthy of sitting on the table. For so long our women have been relegated to places that we know we have capacity above. But this governor has stood out and has ensured that the twinning system is operationalized in Kogi states. When we, I was invited to give her this good message, like I said, my organization as a research organization we did a survey, an independent one. We do not want to come here and talk as politicians. I sent my research officers out, and it's on record, and I want the press to carry it, that all the vice chairmen of the 21 local government council in the state are women. There are 71 women councillors in the state. And of course, the wives of the executive chairmen are recognized officially as chairpersons and playing their active in the governance and adding value to the top tier of government. On the whole, the total percentage of women in government at the local level is 45%. There are a total of one and three women in government in all the local government council of Kogi State. It is also on record that the government of this state has surpassed the Beijing conference requirement of 35. And we also have on record that the Secretary to the Government of Kogi State and Head of Service have all been women since the inception of His Excellency at Teacher in 2016. In the history of the, of the nation, the first and only ADC to be a woman is, a Kogi State, is in Kogi State. And to capital, the Commissioner of Women Affairs remains a lady, and we have a good authority 
that seven women are the DGs and chief executive officers of Parastatas in Kogi State. Above all, for the first time in the Kogi political history, we have a woman at the Federal Executive Council in the person of my sister, Dr. Ramatu Aliu Tiyari, the Honorable Minister of STP, who served as two-term national women leader of two leading political parties, the LPP and the PC. On, an, on all other um, points, we might disagree with Governor Yayabilo, but in this gender balancing thing, trying to make sure that um, he's gender sensitive in his cabinet and what he has been doing so far, I think we should commend him. Well, I think um, from what I have, he has, uh, 30, he has met the 35% affirmative action for women. He has a female ADC. SSG, head of service, all the vice chairmen, Those are big, big and positions. council leaders are mm. women, mm. and uh, he has a minimum of three female councillors in each local government, and more than 70 women in positions of authority. You understand? And for me, people have criticized they are criticizing the NCWS, I will still come to them. But if uh, you look at what they are looking at, the question is, did uh, Yaya Bello do all of these things? He did. Because these are facts. Yes. Yeah, so we cannot uh, take it away from him that uh, more women are actually in government in his administration. So I commend him for that. But at the same time, too, I think uh, women also should be encouraged to be leaders, not vice or VP. But you know, this is one thing that we, women have gotten. So we need to acknowledge that this is the case. But at the same time, too, I think uh, the governor should take a step forward mm. and uh, also encourage women because, for instance, in all the state house of assembly, there is no single female lawmaker mm -hmm. in Kogi state of house of assembly. That is not a good one. And the national assembly. And in the national assembly, so we need. <coughs> we, we also need to, you know, balance that, balance that and yeah. ensure that, uh, you know, this and. I Do think with this um, st statistics, I think mm -hmm. it's quite impressive. Yes, uh, it is. You cannot um, argue with facts. Uh, we may have our reservations about him uh, generally, about his style, about his utterances, but you've got to give it to him that in terms of bringing women into government, he's done uh, tremendously well. And I remember that Obasanjo too brought women to the forefront during his administration and he gave women some key positions, look like the Minister of Finance, the, the, um, what's the, um, the NAVDAC woman, you know? Dora Kweli, Dora Kweli, Kweli. Kweli. Mm. And those women acquitted themselves competently. Yeah. You cannot say that those women that Obasan just gave um, appointments to didn't do well. We Super need ministers. to. If a country like Germany can have a woman as defense minister, mm. we need to begin to give women a chance uh, to, to, to try their hands at uh, some of these uh, um, uh, jobs. Because the truth is, you are likely to get greater honesty from our women. And when they commit themselves to something, you can see that they always uh, do their best, they give their best. Uh, to, to the job. So, Yabelo has done well in that area. Uh, uh, Senator Dino Mela, he said, um, House of Assembly, National Assembly, no one, no woman. That is a fact. It then means that even for elective positions, women need to be encouraged because yeah. in our country, yeah. some parties, they will organize uh, primaries and you find that women, even when women queue up, and uh, when a woman is on the ballot, they, and women queue up 
they go there, they disrupt them, and ensure that those primaries are rigged. I've seen it happen. So one is making is that women should be given a chance to also be able to contest for elective positions, not just in Kogi, but uh, other places. Look at Adama, for example. They always produce female senators from Adama. Hmm. But there are some states in Nigeria where women have never emerged as yeah, senators. senators. Yet, when it comes to mobilizing people for election, for, to, for, to vote on election day, the women, women are easier to mobilize than men. So it's about time that women get their opportunities. Because I know that when you give them the opportunity, they will do well. I was counting some of the appointments that Yabelo has made, and I counted 81 of them. In fact, the vice chancellor of the Kogi State University is a woman. Mm. And that, in that the new state, vice chancellor. The new vice chancellor of the Kogi State mm. University. Mm. And that in itself is a record. Mm. You know? So. It's ADC. I, he said this, I saw, I saw the woman behind him. Yes. You know, so it, it's not in all cases that you just want to criticize a man. If he's done something, well, I don't understand why people are criticizing these women. The women, you know the reason why these women did this. They did this not to show that the Abelo has done something that no one has ever done, but to encourage other governors. Because I spoke with one of the women and she said, see, we don't understand why they are criticizing us. What we have done, we have done it just to encourage other Governors, women and encourage the Abelo himself to mm. do more. Yeah. So you can't quarrel with that. At least follow the Beijing 95, um, 35 percent uh, affirmation. Affirmation mm. the Beijing Conference of uh, 1995. So if someone has taken it beyond that, that no matter what we have against him, mm. we can leave what we have against him for another day. But at least on this, I don't know how to say that uh, yeah, 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 not done well. that's and, uh, something wrong. Because people will confront me. The number of with commissioners, the, the number of commissioners, the number of local government chairperson, vice chairman, and from those I government said agencies, yes. agencies mm. and parastatas. Mm. A lot of women are heading agencies and parastatas. That's director general, this director general, that. So this is the thing, and all that one can say is that those women should just keep giving their best. A time will come. Because look at America now. Kamala Harris, she may be the next president of the US. The yeah. No one can, uh, can say with certainty that this old man will do two terms. So, and we are saying if the, 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 the chancellor of Germany is a woman, mm -hmm. and even Germany also, uh, and a, a, a woman as defense means that same country, Germany, mm -hmm. the sky is the limit for our women. Hmm. Busy? Yep. <laughs> the final I, analysis? Yes, I uh, would just advise uh, the NCWS to also take more interest in uh, cases against women in our society. For instance, uh, cases of sexual harassment, rapes, and the rest. I want their voices to be heard. All over the world now. You know, eh? What does he want? No, I thought that I, campaign is so. No, I want the voice of the. NCWS okay, okay. to be louder okay. in such situations. That's just my mm. right. party. Because nobody has. <laughs> <laughs> because we have women that so oppress them. <laughs> no, they oppress us. So. Men oppress us. I know no, all we, of we that. We to start so. so we <laughs> just showed courage by giving <laughs> top positions to women, and uh, I don't think they're disappointed. So yes. Right. Exactly. Okay. The more opportunities we give them, the, the better. More, yes, we'll the see better for our society. Yeah. All right. I want to thank you, Olabisi Deji Thank, thank you, you for your contribution today. Thank and you. the Mesro himself. And um, we also wish Baba happy birthday again. Yes. Baba is 84 today. Uh, because of COVID 19, maybe we expect Baba to send something to us, at least uh, to celebrate. No, they will, send, they will send it by multimedia. By uh, multimedia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's 84th birthday. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can also watch us on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Bye for now and please stay safe.